Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, welcome to the uh, uh, sixth lecture uh, in the Tanah Air lecture series uh, in uh, looking into uh, and uh, creating a narration for Malay maritime civilization. Uh, this is the first lecture in uh, 2022. And uh, we've invited uh, uh, one uh, Zalina Abdul Aziz, uh, otherwise known as Dino Aziz, uh, to uh, be the sixth lecturer uh, in the title, The Rise of uh, the Malay Maritime Kingdoms Traced Through the Hikayat Malayu. I have uh, I, I, I've encountered and I know uh, Dino uh, over so many years through uh, the newspaper pages. Uh, I've been following her, uh, her writings, uh, especially the early writings in the, in the Straits Times on, on the Malay Hikayat and Malay Tales. Although I'm not a fan of uh, Malay Hikayat as such, I don't read it as such unless, uh, until it's, uh, unless it's necessary for exams and other purposes. But uh, she has uh, given new life to uh, the world of, of the Hikayat. Alam Hikayat Melayu, Alam Nusantara, Alam Peradaban uh, Melayu through the Kaya, and it is it is a life of its own. And when we read her writings and her many books, I think uh, we will we'll, we'll be drawn in to the uh, to the uh, intricacies and to the uh, mystique uh, of how the Kaya reveals our, our world and ourselves. Um, Nino Aziz, eh? Nino is an award-winning author and storyteller from Malaysia, and this is how she has described herself. And I think she has given a new meaning to uh, the word storytelling uh, in, 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 in the widest sense of the word. Uh, and she uh, gave us uh, a genealogy, uh, which is uh, quite intriguing, uh, which I shall read out. Uh, Daughter of Abang Te daughter of Chu Rahmah, daughter of Yang Chi, daughter of Pabunga, and daughter of Abdul Aziz, son of Tuk Muda Salehuddin, son of Tuk Awang Pekan, son of Tuk Nik, son of Tuk Tunggal, son of Tuk Gaful, son of Tuk Haji, son of Tuk Sabur. Uh, I reckon that this is all uh, from Paham. And yeah. I've asked you, uh, how far when it goes, uh, it is about in the 17, 1800. So you have, you have traced your, your genealogy to uh, seven, eight generations. That's uh, quite uncommon among Malay families. Uh, and, and this is the Hikayat in itself. This is the Hikayat that uh, we live through. And uh, we get stories from uh, our parents, from our ancestors. And uh, I don't know. Uh, Myself, I, I'm fortunate that uh, I, I have great uh, uh, parents. I have parents who are great storytellers. Uh, they, they are the ones who are, uh, are responsible for certain things which I'm doing now uh, in terms of my interest in history, my interest in genealogy and so on, and episodes in the family. I, I think that uh, each of us uh, must uh, value uh, what our parents tell us. Uh, uh, Nino was born in Hobart, Tasmania, uh, Australia in 1965. Uh, returned to Malaysia when she was six years old. Uh, she grew up in the idyllic village of Chenor, Pahang, and attended the boarding school, Sekolah Sri Putri, Kuala Lumpur, where she found a voice as a poet. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, uh, she naturally found a career in communications. Uh, supported by her family and English teacher, she wrote anthologies and novels with various publishers and has written 14 titles. Uh, are there more to come? Uh, yes, this year alone, I think there's four. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look forward. Uh, she is today a leading PR consultant with BZB Consults Jabahat, an award-winning PR firm. Uh, and uh, uh, champion of the Malaysian arts and culture and lives in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, uh, Nino, uh, if, if uh, you were to trace uh, uh, activities, uh, is one of those in, in Malaysia who has managed to uh, 
create an impact uh, in uh, uh, in a career as uh, a colonial of the Hikaya uh, and how uh, it is manifested uh, and transmitted. Uh, I think she knows how it is to be done uh, very well and she has done it quite well. And today is uh, one of those episodes uh, that I think is important in terms of uh, it, it, it would benefit us a lot uh, with regard to uh, uh, the story of, uh, of um, uh, Malay maritime civilization uh, as gleaned or as gathered from the Kayu as one of the sources and one of the important sources. That day, uh, before that, I was uh, reading uh, Muhammad Nabi Sadeh's uh, translation of uh, the genealogy of kings, and uh, I did a write-up. Uh, I, I, I thought that this is uh, uh, would spur interest in rereading uh, the Sejarah Melayu, because his introduction uh, counters the Rankian notion of, of history, and, and uh, the Hikayat should be uh, our source, one of our sources of, of history, not just the Positive way, positive way of looking at, at the past. So with that, uh, uh, I uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Professor, for the kind introduction. Uh, let me uh, before I start, uh, let me just share my screen because I have uh, sort of a, a presentation to accompany my talk. Now, okay. Uh, now, let me just get this going. And we're going to do that. Do you have slides to share? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, right yeah. now. okay, okay. Yeah. Now, let me just see if I can. Oh, yes, yes, I have slides to share. Can everyone see it? Yeah. So that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oops, hold on. Eh? Okay. Okay, good, good. Yeah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Yang berbahagia Professor Datuk Ahmad Murad Marikan, EJK uh, Istek IIUM, Ahli Ahli Akademik, uh, Sidang Hadirin yang dihormati sekalian. Indah berbalam si awan petang berarak di celah pepohon ara. Pemanis kalam selamat datang awal bismillah pembuka bicara. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Can you hear me, Professor? Yes, yes, yes. Alhamdulillah segala pujian bagi Allah SWT dengan keizinannya jua. Saya dapat hadir hari ini untuk berkongsi pandangan dan pemerhatian saya dengan pembentangan The Rise of the Malay Maritime Kingdom Trade through the Hikayat. Saya mengucapkan ribuan terima kasih kepada Istek kerana menjemput saya. I'm very honoured uh, because I'm a storyteller, not an academician. Um, kerana memberikan perkenalan dan juga uh, Profesor kerana memberikan perkenalan dan juga kerana menjemput saya sebagai peng, uh, pembentang ke-6 projek The Malay Maritime Civilization. Para hadirin yang dihormati, saya mohon uh, meneruskan ucapan dalam bahasa Inggeris sempena memberi peluang lebih ramai dapat mendapat manfaat daripada topik hari ini. And you got uh, your friends from the Philippines also? Uh, yes, I hope so. I'm not yeah. sure. Okay. <laughs> I hope he, he tunes in. Ladies and gentlemen, we know the world is changing. Climate change is playing havoc with our landscape where sea levels are rising. And our most important cities may sink beneath the seas one day, and the existence of the coastal cities are constantly at peril. The world may look very different in 2050, and this puts fear in most societies. And yet, this should not have been the case. Because in the Malay archipelago, Living with the sea should be as natural as us, uh, to us as breathing. In our past, the subject of this whole series, we were a maritime society. And yet, today, if we really look at it, there are no more big boats. There are no more um, 
uh, uh, there are no uh, stories, there are no uh, skills that we can uh, look towards. There's no real socio-economic activity uh, solely dependent on the seas. We do not see that. And if we did not have records from China, from Japan, from India, from our hikayat, from our undang-undang laut that is kept in the Vatican City Library, we may not find this easy to believe. The fact that we were a Malay maritime civilization. And that is the root of all um, our loss, that we really do not recognize it and we do not see it in our everyday lives. We know that the Malay Archipelago is actually one of the most unique regions in the world, where the people built kingdoms that connected thousands of islands, and we talk about thousands, 25,000 islands. In Philippines alone, more than 7,000 islands. And we even forget that the Philippines was once a Malay kingdom, Kingdom of Manila, Raja Sulaiman. We, we forget all that. Sometimes many of us only know Malacca, which is, uh, uh, which is bad enough. And so um, from the Philippines to Indonesia, Malaysia to Borneo, today more than 600, close to 600 million people reside in the maritime Southeast Asia. A region that I said has 25,000 islands, but hundreds of years ago, when there was no Singapore, no, uh, no Malaysia, no Indonesia, et cetera, et cetera, no, you know, th this uh, different, different uh, uh, countries apart from each other, um, the kingdoms of Champa, Sivijaya, Matahit, Melaka, Patani, Lankasuta pioneered the formation of maritime uh, kingdoms uh, as far back as the turn of the millennia. Unfortunately, much of the knowledge and skills inherited from that era is almost extinct, as well as our identity. This is the key thing. Yeah? Our identity as ocean explorers, we do not have that. You have the Vikings, you have Cheng Ho from China, but the Malay people as ocean explorers, as explorers, as navigators, we do not see that anymore. We do not, we do not believe in that anymore. And really, how do people believe? Is when they hear it as stories told to them as a child and growing up. So, I, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's important for me to touch briefly on Hikayat Melayu, although everyone here might know, but for the benefit of uh, uh, people who might see this later. We know that the Hikayat Melayu were among the most popular and oldest form of literature that epitomized the civilization and cosmopolitan lifestyle of an ancient era of the Malay archipelago. It was part classical literature that was generally shared through oral storytelling in the past, and these were later preserved by casting stories on available natural sources like bamboo, lonta palm leaves, tree bark, and locally made ink um, using soot, uh, using uh, cobwebs, and squid ink. You have to be uh, sailors and fishermen to get squid ink in the past. Yeah? These were later uh, uh, preserved by putting the stories on available natural uh, um, uh, paper became available in the 16th century. And the Hikayat found its way to being immortalized uh, in manuscripts, uh, written manuscripts. Uh, Nina, when, yes. when, when you lean forward, your voice is better, audible. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. okay, all right. Okay, so I'll, I'll do. okay. Can you can you hear me now? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that position. Yeah. Okay. So, um, for many years, the hikayat was just that. Legends and folklore used to gain and captivate the audience to record our histories, like sejarah Melayu, hikayat Melayu Mahawangsa, Misa Melayu, and nothing more, just stories. However, over the years, as I've said, and Professor has mentioned, I've been researching and retelling and rewriting this hikayat in attempt to bring it to new audiences, especially our young. And my research has shown me that the hikayat can be just as revealing and just as compelling 
as archaeological findings in showing us life as it were hundreds of years ago, if not thousands in the Malay archipelago. And this is not limited to our hikayat. If we go to our Pantun, our Gurindam, our Sha'ir, we will see this as well. And let me just read this very simple Pantun that we all know. Rumah kecil tiang seribu, rumah besar tiang sebatang. Kecil-kecil ditimang ibu, sudah besar ditimang gelombang. Kampung homes with many pillars, but mansions had strong foundation. In our cradle, our mothers rocked us. But as adults, we seal the ocean. The ocean is never far from us wherever we go in our literature. And that alone shows us the people we were one time ago. Now, I would like to, before we go there, um, when we talk about hikayat, uh, which were transmitted through um, oral storytelling, we have a wealth of stories. We know that. And these stories actually, to the words, can actually almost be like a photo or a video from 100 years ago. Now, let me, let me read this excerpt from Hikayat Awang Sulong Merah Muda. When his cousin, the Princess Dayang Nurama, was getting ready to sail the sea with a crew of entirely maidens. Yeah? Semua anak dara tidak ada janda ataupun teruna on the ship. Now, I will read in Malay and I will give a, a synopsis of the story. Himpunkanlah anak-anak dara datang mengadap ke istana. Lalu bertitah datuk batin alam kepada bujang selamat. Pergilah kau panggil mu'alim. Juru batu. Juru mudi, sekaliannya suruh siapkan kakap. Bunga rampai layangan angin itu serta alat, senjata alat peperangan. Maka selamat pun bermohon mendapatkan mu'alim, juru mudi, juru batu sekaliannya. Maka segeralah juru, madi, juru mudi menggerakkan sekalian hulu balang, memuatkan obat bedil, peluru, serta menyiapkan meriam, senapang apa jua yang kurang disusut, disuruh, ditambah. Tinggal sekalian anak dara di atas kapal. Ada yang menjadi mu'alim, juru muti, juru batu masing-masing dengan jawatannya. Maka kakak pun berlayar. Now this is directly from Awang Sulong Merah Muda. It is it is a, a, an excerpt from the from the legend that is really not talked about. But essentially, in short, a crew of maidens, because uh, Dayang Nurama was uh, heading this expedition to find Awang Sulong, and there cannot be men on the ship. And so the maidens took over, uh, traveled on the ship, here uh, uh, illustrated, or bunga rampai layangan angin, complete with firearms, obat betil, meriam at sea. And they, operate, they, they sailed this ship. Now, far out at sea, it didn't stop there. Far out at sea, the princess saw the galion uh, panjang belonging to the Javanese princess, Putri Dayang Sri Jawa. She felt that the Javanese princess has taken Awang Sulong Merah Muda away. Both ships raised, okay, this is protocol, eh? both ships raised their yellow flag and she boarded the galeong. She was welcomed with Siri, again, protocol, exchange pantun, the courteous offerings among nobles. Here is the story of two, not one, but two princesses of the Malay world, eventually at war each other, at, uh, at war with each other at sea, over the dashing Awang Sulong Merah Muda. So all of us just remember that story. Oh, these two princesses fighting over a prince. But when you read the literature, we hear with our inner voice the background story, not a story of a damsel in distress, but Sri Kandis who braved the ocean, used firearms and cannons, and navigated their own ships. 
Now, this is the reality of the Malay world that we have totally forgotten. We have many legends like this, many, and they inspire marvelous thoughts, marvelous sculptures like this. This is the honorable pirates that I spoke about when I, when I gave a talk at uh, uh, IUM before this. We have many legends of Lakshmana Hang Tua, whose legend appears in Vijayanagara walls, Wukyu records, and Hikayat Hang Tua. And still, we can think of denying this um, this uh, history. The Malay Maritime Odyssey, as the, known as the Hikayat Hang Tua, regales the story of Hang Tua to Majapahit, to Bentan, to Linga, to Palembang, to Aceh, to Brunei, Sri Lanka, Benua Keling, Benua Kita, Jeddah, Istanbul. To me, the Rome mentioned in Hikayat Hang Tua and uh, Sejarah Melayu must be Istanbul, must be the Uman Usmania because uh, um, uh, Sultan Mahmud declared himself as the Rome of Kaiser, and I believe that. But that's for another discussion. Enrique the Black, the first man who navigated the world, we all know this when he accompanied Ferdinand Magellan. We will come back to this when we talk about Morocco. So I must repeat this, ladies and gentlemen, especially among very learned historians and academicians. I am a storyteller. I'm not a historian, but glimpses into this ancient life convince me more than ever, more again and again, that our hikayat and folklore are the memories of the ancient civilization. In legends, there's a slice of our people's history lay frozen in time, akin to a time capsule, to be opened like a box of delight if we wish to, by us centuries later. So when we read our hikayat, coupled with what we have found today, then we begin to, un begin to peel these layers of the onion that shows us. We find that popular world legends too and epics found their way into our hikayat, indicating exchange of culture. How did that culture, exchange of culture come by? resulting from contact point made through trade and religion. These are facts. We will come back to this, but surely this is an indication how our people traveled the world in that era, and more importantly, our legends travel as well. And our literature, our literature truly bears witness to this. Beyond that, through the Hikayat, we see into the mind of the Malay men a woman 1,000 years ago. In Sulatus Salatin, a king thought of vessels that could dive far deep into the sea. Raja Chulan traveled to Dika, and this is what he wanted, and this is what he built. Sebuah peti kaca berkunci dan berpesawat dari dalam. We have these ideas. These are more than 500 years ago ideas. The Mayong tales, if we go further, told of prince and men who sailed the ships that were stranded when the wind died. When you talk about stranded when the wind died, you know what the sea is all about. It's not all about monsoons and hurricanes. Winds can die, that would mean peril. As I mentioned earlier, to the story of Awang Sulu Merahmuda, princesses, who sailed the seas of the Malay archipelago to pursue her love. But yes, that's true. In reading her adventures, we find words. This is, again, the literature that shows us that it's just like that finding at uh, uh, Sungai Batu or, or Borobudur, or etc., etc. We find words like teropong, bongka sao, kakap, geliong. What do these words indicate from our hikayat? The Malay be it man or woman, he was, well, the Malay was a world traveler that sailed marvelous ships with marvelous names, the gigantic John for trade, swift flying Prahu and the global penis. So these are, we cannot deny this. A lot of things in our life 
We have to fill with our heart. And if we seek, we will truly find it. But it goes beyond that because ladies and gentlemen, okay, where did all these marvelous legends happen? The Pesemenanjung Tanah Melayu strategically located along the busiest waterway of the world, the Straits of Malacca, was a world destination since ancient times. I'd like to repeat that. World destination since ancient times. That is why Ptolemy in Egypt in the second century drew maps of the world. His map was like a beautiful novel that recalled the history and interesting stories of the world important at that during that era. And imagine how exciting the story of the Malay world was because in that past, there was no South China Sea, no Gulf of Siam, no Malaysia, no Indonesia, no Thai. Among the strategic locations that Ptolemy drew was of course the Oreo Kenosis. And we know at that time, it was just as important as um, uh, Senior, Trobane and Skizia, uh, the islands of uh, uh, Benua, China, uh, Benua China, the China uh, mainland, um, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka. And in the midst of all that, Oreo Christianesis is an important landmark. One of the earliest confirmed maps of our land. And the places that were stated on that map were Koleopolis, Kelantan, Kongko Negara, which is Ganga Negara in Sejarah Melayu, Primula, brings to mind Trundanu, Sungai Atabas, Pahang. At that time, it is possible that the Gulf of Siam was Primula itself, and the South China Sea was Magnusinus. So this is how we should look at our destination. Um, the world then, the Hikayat records our thoughts, our beliefs, our motivations, our way of life, what inspires our people in understanding the nuances of the Malay. And, and, and just to put it in perspective, we understand since the first century, the Hindu influence was strong in our people. And this when Islam made its debut uh, centuries later, little by little, we see the transition of culture and beliefs and the people who moved in the region. And this only proves that the Malay archipelago was transit and meeting point of many world travelers along the Straits of Malacca. However, it is important to note, like the spice in the region, the region was famous for, and so eagerly uh, sought after by traders, to our world, these influences spiced up our already colorful classical um, literature. Now we are ready to have a look at some of the kingdoms because, in truth, of course, I can't mention all of them. There are too many, which is, is again proof of how strong the maritime uh, civilization was, this region. We'll start with Lankasuka. Lankasuka was a kingdom that existed on various levels in the chronicopia of our memory. And the ancient kingdom appeared, uh, luckily, in many records in Siam, in China, and our own Hikayat Maromahawangsa. And so the earliest records of the Hikayat Maromahawangsa, a most grandeur Malay epic, tells the story of Hikayat. The story goes on to tell um, the story of uh, Raja Maromahawansa, who traveled from the west to the east on the way to China. He was escorting the Prince of Rome. The Prince of Rome, we have many connotations here. Um, his wedding to the Princess of China. However, as their ships entered the Straits, the Garuda attacked. Uh, after many, many altercations, um, the prince was lost, and Raja Maromahawansa took refuge at the beautiful place. The people of the land built a fortress, and here, um, Raja Mahalansa was made king. Now time passed by, and the new kingdom was called Lankasuka, when he wanted to seek a bride for his prince, the next king. 
this is what uh, he asked his mentor to do, to find a princess in, in, uh, in the land. And this is an excerpt directly from Maroma Wangsa, which describes um, uh, the relationship between kingdoms at that time. Maka sembah menteri tua yang keempat, tiada tuanku negeri yang dekat-dekat ini. Patik sekalian beroleh kabar hanya ada negeri pun kabaran di Pulau Perca, negeri Aceh namanya tuanku. Ada sebuah di susu laut dua negeri itu banyak jua takluknya. Laut ya, eh? is mentioned. Dan jauh pelayarannya, 25 hari lamanya daripada sini dan halanya sebelah tanah daratan kita pula ada sebuah negeri nama rajanya Kelinggi lautnya daripada sebelah kita datang jua negeri itu pun jauhlah pelayarannya sehingga sebulan berlayar maka sampailah terlalu banyak segala yang ajaib dalam negeri itu now again in our Malay hikayat in particularly here Meromaha Wangsa we talk about sailing for a month on sea. When you sail over a month for the sea, you must have provisions, you must have skills, you must have a crew, you must have knowledge to navigate the stars and the ocean. So when we read our hikayat, uh, we cannot just take the fact as a fact. We have to be able to go beyond. After all, the kings wrote the hikayat so that their anak cucu, their children, their grandchildren will understand the way of the people. And this is why, for me at least, the Hikayat is like um, a museum. It's like an archaeological finding. It is not merely for me to amaze little children, but really to share uh, what we have. Um, today, we... We can go into the documented proof. We have so many uh, in China. Uh, we have names like Lang Yasu, Lang, uh, Lang Xiaosu, um, from the Song Dynasty, from the Liang Dynasty. We have all that. But what I'm trying to say is that um, from our Malay Hikayat alone, we have to believe. We cannot just keep uh, the narrative of the uh, Western man that is just donging donging. We really have to stop that. Um, one of the earliest Malay uh, uh, kingdoms, uh, even before uh, Aceh, um, is the Pasai. I love the name Pasai Samudra. And um, it's one of, perhaps Hikayat Raja Raja Pasai is one of the earliest uh, work in Malay, uh, uh, on the Malay Muslim kingdom of Samudra Pasai. And in the story, Merasulu met Muhammad in his dream and uh, uh, the, the Prophet Muhammad in his dream, uh, peace be upon him, and uh, accepted the conversion to Islam at the end of the Hikayat. We'll not talk about the whole story, but we'll talk about the end of the Hikayat Pasai. It describes the conquering of Pasai by Majapahit. And this is how it is described. Napati pun mengarahkan segala mengerahkan segala menteri dan penggawa dan segala rakyat naik ke bahteranya. Again, the ship. Masing-masing bermuat segala arta papasan, rampasan, all the treasures found. Dan orang tawanan, not only that, all the slaves. Terlalu banyak dimuatkan hingga saratlah, saratlah kapal ini dengan segala kelengkapan kapal berenang di air. Demikianlah rupa yang segala kelengkapan. Maka sekalian itu berlayarlah kembali ke negeri dengan kemenangannya sepanjang laut dengan tempik soraknya. Apa beberapa nama ia di laut sampailah ia ke Jambi dan ke Palembang. Maka singgahlah ia di Jambi dan di Palembang. Maka kedua buah negeri itu pun menunggul dan berserah senjata maka tertakluklah kedua buah negeri itu ke Majapahit. We read the Odyssey, the Iliad. Do we read our Hikayat Pasai in this manner? And one thing about the Malay Hikayat, 
the kings were truthful about their um, glory, but also about their defeat. Because it is meant as a lesson to future generations. And this is what is so special about the Hikayat, where you can learn about your strength, your way of life, but you can also learn about your weakness, especially if you care to read between the lines. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, we now go to Malacca. And I'm not going to talk about the Sitar Melayu uh, and the Hikayat Hang Tua so much. Uh, we'll take um, uh, resources from uh, away from the Hikayat Melayu. Uh, for example, the records of Peter Petra, who, failed, who sailed with uh, Ferdinand Magellan and Maruti of Raka. Um, they, this was proof that the Malays were great sea masters. I mean, it is no coincidence at all that two of our most famous heroes were admirals at sea or seas or world travelers. Pang Tua and Pang Lima Awang Akka, uh, aka Onriti of Raka. Pang Tua, as we mentioned earlier, traveled to Jambi, Ake, Rukyu, Maka, Rome. I think about 15 years ago, there was this big hoo-ha because we suddenly found a caress in Rukyu. And if we cross-reference uh, later with um, uh, uh, the writings of Alfonso, um, where he did mention that the Rukyu and Hang Tua were connected, um, it, is, it is to really understand Hang Tua, we, we have to look at this Universitas Hang Tua. Um, Developed, I'm a bit sad to mention it, but developed by the Republic of Indonesia, Naval Forces Development and Academic Program. They have a university in the name of Hang Tua to, to pay tribute to his naval uh, superiority. That's why you build a university. I don't where, where, where is this again, Hang Tua University? Uh, uh, Surabaya. Uh, yeah? Surabaya. Surabaya. Okay, okay. Universitas Hang Tua. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there's also one in Padang, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Well, they really regale, uh, regale Hang Tua. Yeah. And I did not, I don't need to say too much about Oriti of Raka. Um, we have Professor Dr. Janice Kapin from Harvard. He believes that the man who first began navigated. The world was um, uh, on the scene, a diplomat linguist, as you put it, uh, uh, Professor uh, uh, Professor Ahmad uh, Murad. Um, I had a personal breakfast conversation in Singapore many years ago with Professor Costa of uh, uh, Portugal, uh, in Portugal, and he assured me that the academia world accepted the story of. Um, uh, uh, Panglima Awang, albeit it may not be the narrative that the Western world wants to admit. And here, as we see, um, Alfonso wrote. Um, let me just let, let's uh, read this for a minute. Um, he mentioned in his uh, commentaries that there had arrived two of their ships from Rukyu, from Japan, at the gate of Singapore, and they were coming to Malacca. But by the advice of the Laksmana, who was the kings of Malacca's admiral, they remained where they were because this Laksmana was a man of 80 years, of good repute and great knowledge, that informed them that Malacca had, fall, had fallen at that time. So these are different, different commentaries, different journals, different diaries that say, this is the man, this is the man, Hang Tua. So we better wake up and accept this fact. We also, because we are talking about the Malay world, we will also talk about, 
This is uh, Professor Joyce Chaplin. And this is, this is actually uh, Enrique de Malacca Memorial Project, which was funded by the government of Singapore. And it went from uh, uh, the Singapore Biennale, it went to the um, uh, Sharjah Biennale in uh, UAE. Um, and that is Fuad Osman, a brilliant artist and who, who has dedicated his life to um, the work uh, to, to Omniki of Malacca. We need to wake up, we need to believe. Let's go to another um, Malay world. Um, we're just going to talk briefly about this. Um, the first admiral, the first female admiral in the world is Laksmana Kumala Hayati of Aceh who it was said that she, she was admired by the Queen of England and who killed the Dutchman Captain Cornelius de Hotman in a one-to-one -one combat. Now, again, as I said earlier, it is not just the men, but also the women, uh, the Sri Kandi of uh, uh, um, the Malay world, who are very much... Uh, in sync with the maritime um, civilization. Uh, tell this to children today, they, they, they would not, it would not be easy to believe. But we need heroes and stories like this for people to believe. Now, um, let me uh, tell a story. That's what I do. So once upon a time, um, there was Tuntaban, who lived in Perak. And Tuntaban was actually part of the exodus out of uh, Malacca. And he resided in uh, uh, Lengong. I was just in Lengong. And he was uh, a warrior. And the community, the, the, the people uh, in Perak continued to develop a very peaceful, um, uh, pe uh, a very peaceful settlement. And Tun Saban was saying, we need a king. We need a sultan. And he traveled through the rivers with his uh, sons. And he crossed the sea to Kampa, where Sultan Mahmud was. Sultan Mahmud, after he left Melaka, he went by the river. It's not only the sea that we are adept at by the river down to Sungai Mua and then cross over to Pahang and from Bahang, Pahang sail to Bentan and then Bentan and finally he was in Kampa. So Sultan Mahmud was in Kampa together with Sun Fatima as well as Onang, uh, Onang Kina. And he, he had uh, several children of course, mainly Sultan Muzaffa, the son with the prince with Onang Kinang of Kelantan and also um, uh, uh, the son of um, Tun Fatima, uh, who later became Sultan Alauddin the Ayat of Jubal. So, so Tun Saban came down, Kampa, built the sea, and asked Sultan Mahmud for his son to become the new Sultan of Hera. And this is how the, uh, um, the Pera Sultans came to be. Sultan Muzaffa. Uh, sailed the sea across Atengku Muzaffar sailed the sea across the Straits of Malacca with Tun Saban as well as Megat Trawis who was from Pagaruyong and they all the stories about how you know they couldn't the ship couldn't move when they uh, arrived in uh, Tanjung Abang and finally um, after a huge uh, 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 hurricane uh, again uh, these are the stories. Uh, so Tunku Muzaffar had to throw his mahkota to sea and then he could sail across and then establish the sultan uh, dam of uh, the sultanate of uh, Perak. Again, this story is just a story, but it shows how we travel the river, we traverse the ocean just to bring back the sultan and the difficulty that the Sultan had to go through 
with the sea not welcoming him. And the sea had to accept him. The rivers had to accept him for him to become king. Now, if that is not the psyche of the Malay man, the Malay world, the Malay people, the Malay archipelago, what is? We have, of course, this ship. The only reason why I went to Borobudur was to find this ship. And I was almost in tears because I couldn't find it. I didn't go with the guide. I wanted to experience Borobudur. And I walked round and round and round. And as I was about to leave, this ship appeared to me in that secluded corner. This is a ship that was etched in the 8th century. What is it doing in that big structure of Borobudur, if not to tell us our legacy of a maritime kingdom? To demonstrate again that the Perak kingdom, uh, the Misa Melayu also refers to this maritime tradition. Perahu bergelar raksasa indera. Sikap seperti singa utara. Awan berarak mega antara. Usulnya tiada lagi bertara. Di dalamnya banyak alat senjata. Meriam rentaka lengkap semata. Kenapang pemuras jangan dikata. Sekaliannya bertata kodi semata. So ladies and gentlemen, again, now, uh, our ships, the names are always so fantastical. Raksaksa Indra, Bunga Rampai, uh, Layangan Angin. This is our literature. The Malay Hikayat, ladies and gentlemen, reflects our history. It is a different kind of history, but it is history nevertheless that records the way of life through spoken and written words from long ago that has proven faithful in its interpretation until today. This is reason enough to continue to explore the Malay Hikayat and study the coded secrets they reveal to us through reading through deep appreciation and wonder at their beauty and splendor. For so long, we have been made to believe that we are not world navigators, not inventors, not artists. How long can we be? Look at these beautiful inventions. Look at the skills from the Hikayat. I will just go through very quickly. Governance, protocol, and diplomacy from Undang Undang Laut Secara Melayu. Knowledge, language, wisdom, Hikayat Hangkwa. Building and fortresses, Sejarah Melayu. Different types of textile, Hikayat Malim Deman. That's an, the whole, another whole uh, discussion. Vapious weaponry, Sejarah Melayu, Kitab Bedil. Shipbuilding, shipbuilding and tools, Awang Serong Merah Muda, job description. Weddings, pregnancy, and birth. Entertainment, music, and dance from Panji Smerang. Magical beings, scientific thoughts, original tales, Maroma Wangsa, religion. All this described and discussed in our Hikayat Melayu. Again, I do not want our children to be misled. Our legends, folklore are truly the memories of our ancient civilization. Let us reclaim our sense of pride as a people, our place in the world. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.
Professor, we can hear you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I was saying this now. I, that was a brilliant revelation of the Malay psyche, the Malay maritime psyche. Uh, you have uh, delineated uh, some of the features uh, through the hikayat, through the various hikayats. And I was thinking when, 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 when you were lecturing, uh, perhaps uh, Malaysia can have a hikayat museum. Uh, much, much better than the uh, Singapore steel from the Malay world. I thought you visited that. I visited that a few times. Uh, it was well curated, but then if we can have a Hikayat Museum that can visualize uh, and retell in visual form, uh, for example, uh, of, of, of uh, the maritime prowess of, of the Malay kingdoms and uh, uh, shipbuilding technology, uh, navigation uh, to visualize it uh, and uh, to link it to the various hikayats. That would be marvelous. I, perhaps you can have a, you can propose a project and uh, uh, ISTAC can collaborate uh, uh, on that. Because yeah, one of the things, yeah, one, one of the objectives of this uh, lecture series, uh, which I've not really spelled out, uh, which is in the paper, is to create a maritime museum. Uh, we have maritime museums in Indonesia, in I think two or three parts of Indonesia, but I think that we don't have a full-fledged maritime museum in Malaysia. We only have one, one uh, misplaced uh, uh, manifestation of it in Malacca. I think that has to be corrected and, and uh, maritime museum from this. So I, I, one of the speakers which I've invited was the, is the uh, Director General of the Malaysian Maritime Institute. Uh, perhaps uh, later, that will be uh, later this year. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, I'm sure there are, there are questions and, and, and comments from, from uh, participants. Uh, um, we, we're waiting for them. Uh, I'm very, I'm, uh, you know, I see Professor Ahmad Jelani there. I'm very... <laughs> You know, it, it, it humbles me. It humbles me to see you there. Uh, you know, uh, thank God I didn't realize you were you were here because if I knew you were here, then I wouldn't have been able to collect my thoughts. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, Dr. Jelani, can uh, may, may ask some questions? Uh, perhaps oh, yeah. from uh, a certain perspective. Yeah, Dr. Jelani. I have to state again, eh? I'm a storyteller. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Delaney. Any 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 comments or questions from you? Uh he has to unmute. Dr. Jelani, we can't hear you. Dr. Jelani, we can't hear you. Unmute, unmute. Okay, um, I don't know how, how to get in, uh, but there's a question from YouTube. Uh, uh, maybe we, we, we'll, we'll, we'll tackle this first. Uh, considering hikayats are literary works which were written much later uh, to the events they describe, how useful or dependable are hikayats as a source of historical study? It's what we are, we are, we're talking before this, uh, to look at hikayats as another historical source. Okay. Uh, which I think will, will interest much uh, Dr. Jelani and, and many others also. Okay, I, I, I would like to, uh, uh, I, I hope we can get Dr. Jelani's question uh, later. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I see here my senior, uh, my junior from Sri Putri is here. Thank you very much, Padilla from Taylor's University. And to this question, uh, again, we live in a world that is very connected. And we live in a world that now has access to many, many, uh, uh, many, many resources, as I said. In, get, in understanding our history from the resources that we have, we need to do a few things. Number one, we must be familiar with the Hikayat. 
Number two, we must be able to read between the lines. And number three, we must have the capacity to cross-reference with other references. And I'm very glad to see, you know, like, for example, the uh, Tepetan, uh, Okinawa, Tepetan, uh, um, uh, Nogara, um, uh, all these works are coming into play that connect us with the findings in Rukyu, in China, in India. That is what we have to do. We cannot read. I cannot just read Hikayat. And that is why in my in my research for my hikayat, I find that I have to do 80% research before I can tell on a story. Because I have so many resources to read and then to cross check to make sure that they are dependable. But the hikayat uh, points, uh, uh, becomes a pointer. It shows me the way. And then it sort of whispers in my mind, you know, go and find the other um, uh, collaborative, collaborative um, histories to uh, to support what you find in the hikayat, and because we live in this day and age, we are able to do that, where everything is so accessible. So, um, how useful and dependable? Very useful, because in all speaking of truth, if you do not have the inspiration and you do not have that pointer to show you the way or to inspire you, you will not be able to find that little, that rich uh, uh, knowledge that you seek. And that was the, that is what the Hikayat is doing. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, Dr. Jirani is uh, still uh, uh, asked to unmute, yeah. Apa, Dr. Jirani, boleh, boleh. I'm so excited that you're here. Um, while waiting, I have uh, uh, one question. How, how from the Hikayat, uh, how, how do we find, how do we assess the knowledge of uh, navigation uh, by, by, by the Malays? Uh, what kinds of knowledge do they have? Uh, what are their sources of knowledge? Uh, yeah. I, I, I did not put um, uh, uh, my thoughts from Unang Dang Laut here. As you know, uh, the Unang Dang Laut worries me when I talk about this uh, in midst of so many aspects. But the Unang Dang Kanon uh, 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 Melaka, there's two parts to it. So the first is Unang Dang uh, uh, um, Dang uh, Kanum Laka, and the yeah. second part of it is actually the Undang Undang Laut. And uh, earliest, um, uh, earliest, uh, uh, the earliest manuscript, I think, is in the Vatican Library, uh, as per the research of um, uh, Dr. Liu, as well as uh, Dr. Ahmad Jelani. So I'm very worried here. But from the Undang Undang Laut, then you see. Uh, the, the the roles of everyone involved. Uh, for example, when I mentioned just now, you know, you know the uh, Malim who is you know uh, key to to to, to um, in in the Basra he is the key, and then the you know the Irubatu, etc. So that shows that shows the knowledge. And then when you read uh, uh, Hikayat, so that is from Unang Dao, which is very straightforward. I mean, it's real knowledge. But when you read uh, 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 Melayu, then you see how they use, um, for example, the word kasa, uh, which is ship, teropong. Uh, I mean, when you use such item, that is, uh, that shows the, um, the skills and the implements that you have at that time. So, you just have to treat the hikayat like a textbook that has to be uh, delved into deeper and not just for the stories. But the stories is always this thing falls in love with that princess, etc. But you really need to read why was all this way of life um, described so vividly in the manuscripts and the hikayat. And that's where you find it. 
Meaning, meaning when one reads the hikayat, one also has got to read the subtext. Be, be alert yes. uh, to the subtext of the hikayat, uh, not only in its literary form. Yes, not only the story, but what is described in the story, which is very, very descriptive, which is unbelievably descriptive. I wonder where is my... Uh, well, we do not have to go into that. I, I read some, some of the... Uh, uh, Except that so it's very descriptive and it is not just a story uh, or a love story um, as in so many uh, legends around the world. It is truly presenting the way of life. Yeah. When you talk about Maria Mrentaka on yeah. the ship, yeah. for example, you talk about Maria Mrentaka on the ship, you talk about Sarat, Arta Pampasan, uh, Hanta, uh, Arta Rampasan being brought on the ship. You have to think about the ship's capacity. You have to think about how strong the ship is. You have to believe that if you have Maria Amrindaka, that means you have that bronze knowledge and you have uh, a way of bringing this Maria onto the ship. You know, so many things. I mean, yes, it's just a statement, it's just a sentence. Yes, yes, but if yes. you really delve deep into it, uh, how was this done? Who were the people, the 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 metalsmith, the you know the, the the people who made all these things, who made the ships, who made the Mariam, who made the Peluru, uh, you know this kind of thing, and and why would this Hikaya believe that a ship full of maidens can handle a warship? But yeah. then then you have history coming in. You have Laksmana Kumala. Akumalaya uh, Hayati, who is exactly that. Her her crew was all the, the Inambau, Inambau, all ladies. You talk about Anduga Wijamalai, her Srikandi were all ladies. So, so the Hikaya just tells what is there during the time. But because it's put in Hikaya, oh, you think it's not true? No, it's reflective of the people of the time. Yes. And you have to look beyond what is not. Uh, 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 when you read poetry, you read what is between the lines, the feeling that it gives to you, the gut feeling, the knowledge. That is how ilham happens. So all this put together is how you really get the best of hikayat. How, how do you think the hikayats uh, should be uh, exposed to schools? I don't know. My 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 my. I mean, uh, these are not really. I mean, these are uh, only exposed to those in upper secondary school, perhaps in form six. When I took, uh, you know, Basam uh, Layu, I have to read the uh, Kaihanto and Zara Layu and so on. Uh, but then the, again, the pedagogy of it is is different. Uh, and 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 uh, I think perhaps uh, the the how we approach how things are taught is critical with regard to how we see and assess and value the Hikayat. And this is where teachers who teach literature and who use the Malay Hikayat to teach literature must re-evaluate and reorientate their view of, of teaching uh, literature as such. Or perhaps the Hikayat must also be taught in other areas, perhaps in history. But I know that historians would not, uh, would oppose, uh, would, 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 would contradict would say that the hikayats are, are, have nonsense, uh, cannot be a source of history. That's why I want to listen to Dr. Jelani. Uh, he, he, he may be opposed to it or would be opposed to it because uh, the hikayats do not have the features of, uh, of, uh, of, of historical knowledge. Uh, cannot be proven, cannot be replicated, uh, not em empirically uh, uh, observable as such. Okay, I, I, I have a... I have a question to everybody. What inspires our children of this age? What inspires? Can you turn to your right? In teaching, in teaching, in okay. teaching, when we want to teach our children something, it must be something they believe in. And today, if we really ask our children, what do they believe in or what moves them or what do they really see as important in terms of values 
in terms of where do they find that? They get it from the anime. From where? The anime cartoon. The anime, anime cartoon. Animation. Okay, the anime. Okay. Yeah, okay. And this is where, and the e-games. Okay. And this is where China and Japan have very, very, they have done it so well in coming to the minds of the world. There is this game, Genshin Impact. And this game, this e-game, is based on kingdoms. So there's the kingdom of, I can't remember the names, representing China, representing Japan, representing Germany, representing France. Our kingdom is not there. I don't believe that um, today, yes, yes, I mean, of course, you can teach history, you can teach, uh, you can teach the sense of self in schools and university. But our students, our children learn from many more platforms. And we have to be there. You must have an e-game about the Sultanate of um, Malacca or, yeah. or, or, or Maroma Wangsa as a do, hero. Do we have that? Do, do we have that? Uh, it's, it's coming. Coming up. It's, it's beginning to come, it's beginning to come. But this whole world, this whole psyche, this that you know, the whole history that navigates the game has to be there. And because my audience are uh, uh, children, uh, young adults, I watch, I watch uh, uh, with my children, I watch anime and understand how they present their history. Movies like Your Voice. Um, series like uh, Attack on Titans. I watch all that because I want to see how they, how they in, not invade, but they really get into the minds of our children. And this is why, why, this is how we need to present our hikayat. Oh yes, we can have, we can have museums, uh, we, we can have a, a, a center, but we also need to have it online in their lives. How they yes, play, yes. Yeah, how yeah, they yeah. play, how they read, how they experience emotion. That's where we need to have them. Meaning that, that you, you're taking the, perhaps the extreme way of uh, making the Hikayat tales online, which means to say that every moment, well, we are online every moment. So we, 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 we're looking at that, that approach yes. to, to technologize we, a popular culture, to, to, to make it popular culture in the sense yes. of using technology. We need to have it on Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, but I, I, uh, uh, I watch uh, uh, Utubu, of course. I mean, I think everyone watches Utubu. But when we inspired by that, I uh, watch The Rise of the Phoenix, um, uh, uh, Mandarin uh, uh, series based on history and fall in love with it. So much so that, you know, I took up Mandarin. So this is how we need to present there's no two ways about it. Yeah. Okay. And, and I'm glad that MDEC is uh, um, uh, providing these grants for, uh, I have a few, I have a few projects um, uh, going um, uh, uh, with, with MDEC uh, on um, Queen Fatima, uh, Wali Nongsari, some, some short movies, some animation. So uh, the government is moving the right direction. Uh, my creative uh, 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 it's a platform that you know helps the creative people to produce things like this, and, and we need that. Yeah, it, yeah, as, yeah. As much as we cannot just rely on the hikayat, we need other sources. Um, this also needs uh, intervention from many, many, uh, uh, many, many uh, departments, uh, governments, uh, corporate world, etc., to, to 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 make this happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, b before I, I, I call Dr. Magdalene, just one, one more thing. Uh, apart from the hikayats that are well known, uh, there are many, many hundreds, or perhaps thousands of, uh, of stories that are not known. And uh, there are many ways to make it known in terms of uh, how we manifest that, uh, how we retell that in, in various forms. I think that is also important. I mean, most of us would know Sarah Mario and Hikayat Tua. But not many of us would know, uh, say, uh, uh, or you know, uh, 
even even we may know Muru Mahawangsa, but we may not do the story. So uh, this has to be manifested. Uh, it's my team, for example. We can Mama Anafia. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, and, and I was just uh, this morning. There was uh, uh, my my first uh, lecture on the uh, Melayu Tanjung. Uh, we invited uh, Dato Maharudin. He was talking about the the uh, the, uh, the popularity, quote unquote, of Hikayat Mama uh, Anafia in in Tanjung in, in Penang in the 1800 and 1900. Uh, and uh, some houses would have that. You know, they, they, they would be familiar with the story. One of which is because uh, Tanjung was a scriptorium where they copy manuscripts from Jalan Melayu in the 1805 when Raffles was there and uh, various other manuscripts. So I think that, that the less known, lesser known kayaks uh, will also have to be popularized. And I, I'm thinking all, uh, beyond the, uh, the uh, Singapore Library tales from the Malay world, uh, uh, we can do better. They've done good, excellent, but uh, I think we... You know, we, I flew down for one day just to see that. Yeah. And, and it was marvelous. Marvelous, yeah. I walked exactly. in and I started crying because of the Sha'ir. <laughs> now we have to, we are the keepers of the Malay world. Malay yeah. world Malay we have to, um, we have to think beyond we have to be a world destination. Exactly, exactly, exactly. We, 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 they have narrated, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I flew down twice uh, to, to, uh, uh, to follow the curator. Uh, okay, uh, Dr. Jalani. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Just now, somebody. Yeah, great. Right. <laughs> Stop, that might be so. Okay. Can you hear? Can you hear? Go ahead, go ahead. I tell the whole time, Benda to be, been blocked. I don't oh, know who, who, who closed it. Okay, okay. So, what's it? 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 Clearly, because sometimes the voice, your voice, uh, timbul tenggelam, timbul tenggelam. Yeah, oh dear. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Uh, then, oleh karena itu, saya cuma uh, kala komen. Setin tanda hikayat is hikayat, sejarah is sejarah, or history is history. But when when you apa ni menulis hikayat and join up dengan history as a background, selalu Selalunya, selalunya akan distorted history. But it won't distorted hikayat. Of course, you lantak dari buah apa pun dalam tu. Sebab, whoever read hikayat orang tua, intend to believe hikayat orang tua itu satu yang that was real. Hang tua pergi ke Mekah, hang tua pergi ke pergi pergi ke Rome dengan apa ni, uh, dengan, dengan, dengan gali. Gali was never in the Malay world before the Portuguese came. The word Gali was never because Sikai Antoa was written in 1621 after the Dash came. Gali was there more than 100 years in Malacca, in the Malay world. So they don't know what they I mean, that's just impossible to say that Mahantua Bua Pakai Gali. That one thing. And Gali is rowing ship. Row, yeah. pakai row. Pakai row macam itu nak travel from, from Malaysia to Mekah. That's, although it's not impossible. Tapi, almost impossible. Jadi, selalunya hikayat ini, apa ni, uh, hik, uh, sejarah distorted by the hikayat. Tapi tak apa. Sebab itu hikayat, we understand. Macam tadi, minta maaf tadi, Puan katakan uh, there, there, there were two Malay uh, Laksamana, Admiral in the, uh, in the Malay world. Tapi ini satu lagi distorted of sejarah. At least mereka have three Admirals. Tiga Laksamana jelas. Hang Tua, uh, apa na, Koja Hassan dan juga apa ni, uh, Han Nadim. Yeah. Ini semua related. Jadi 
itu sudah apa ni kemungkinan pula eh, hantu hanya tak ada masa itu sebab sejarah Melayu katakan dia tak ada kemudian satu apa ni Hang Nadim adalah di antara kalau mengikut sejarah Melayu adalah apa ni Lakshmana yang paling banyak berjuang bukan Hang Tuah betul ayat jelas dalam sejarah Melayu di antara orang yang banyak bertempur dengan musuh ini termasuklah Portugis dan uh, yang lain-lain adalah Hang Nadim bukan Hang Tuah ya. kemudian kita dapati apa ni uh, apa tadi yang cerita uh, Hang Tuah pergi ke India uh, pergi apa ni men, uh, taming kuda kuda perang tu sedangkan di Melaka pada masa itu yang ada kuda padi tak pernah orang Melaka perang naik kuda kita don't have horses how can Hang Tuah boleh 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 ini It really distorted history kemudian dia nak Zaman zaman yang dia pergi ke Rom itu, zaman yang dia pergi ke uh, Rom atau Istanbul itu adalah zaman dia katakan dalam zaman uh, Al-Fatih. 1453 lah itu senang saja sebab ke, apa, kejatuhan Konstantinopel atau Istanbul. Yes. Macam mana dia boleh sampai situ sedang Al-Fatih tengah sibuk perang. Dia menghadapi, dia, dia bertujuan untuk menguasai barat. Di belakang dia orang Mongol, tapi orang Mongol sudah 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 menunggu. Jadi nak entertain orang Melayu. Sebenarnya zaman yang dipergi disampai oleh orang Melayu uh, ke, ke Istanbul itu zaman uh, apa ni uh, Salim, Salim ada Sulaiman, Salim dan Sulaiman dan lak semua itu bukan lak semua. Masuk itu sudah hang Tuhan ada tadi, fifteen something. Itu adalah Laksamana Aceh jelas dalam kalau nak tengok dalam hikayat apa hikayat apa ni hikayat uh, uh, Allahu Akbar hikayat uh, lad, Lada Secupak hikayat Aceh Lada Secupak ataupun ya. kita bacalah tentang hikayat Aceh tentang bagaimana perhubungan Aceh dengan apa ni dengan dengan, uh, dengan uh, uh, apa ni Osmania dan kapal-kapal Usmania hanya sampai ke alam Melayu kapal-kapal. Eh, kapal itu galion-galion Karek dan sebagainya itu Bergentin dia, tak dia tak ada Bergentin dia, Karek dia sampai ke alam Melayu hanya dalam zaman Aceh. Betul. Meriam dia memang sampai. Tapi uh, ada yang menunjukkan mengatakan ada istinggal. Mah Nah, ada istilah, istilah tu pun tak muncul dalam istilah Melayu dalam zaman Melaka. Tak ada. Jadi kita menggambarkan sesuatu yang uh, kemudian di, bila dibaca oleh uh, anak-anak, dibaca oleh, eh, mereka akan percaya ni. Mereka akan percaya. Cerita tu tak apa. Sebab itu cerita. Uh, dia akan percaya oh orang Melayu dulu hebat ada senapang ada istingga ada pemuras mana ada wasang tua meriam memang ada itu tidak dapat nyatakan ha? meriam lela rentaka lela dan rentaka itu adalah meriam Melayu 50 meter saja boleh tangkap dah bola apa ni perunya dia, dia, dia tak kuat tidak five pounder yang dibawa oleh kapal-kapal Portugis tu Justru itu kalau kalau kita tengok apa ni dalam apa ni catatan Tommy Pires yang mengatakan uh, apa ni Melaka bawa turun malam dari kapal-kapal Gujarat five pounder dari kapal-kapal Gujarat untuk membantu perang Melaka untuk membantu kota Melaka sedangkan kalau ikut dia pula kata Melaka mempunyai 3000 meriam apa nak buat dengan meriam daripada kapal Gujarat yang empat buah It's just ridiculous dia punya connection. Maaflah saya campur-campur semua ni. Lagi satu kalau kita tengok lukisan nombor satu. Ini a bluff from uh, artist impression of uh, apa ni keadaan masa itu. Kalau macam puan tunjuk tadi ya kap, uh, kota Melaka yang last tu kan kota Melaka tu. kita tengok it's impossible a ship of that huge boleh masuk Kuala Melaka. Kalau dia masuk dia boleh kona dah. Kuala Melaka, Sungai Melaka itu tidak lebih besar daripada apa yang ada hari ini. 
follow dia. Kalau tidak, mana boleh apa ni? Apa nak Afa Musa tu terletak betul-betul di kuala, dekat Kuala uh, Sungai Melaka. Sekarang je lah, sekarang ni sudah lebih jauh. Duduk dekat itu je. Macam mana Pramiswara nak bina apa ni uh, jambatan across Sungai Melaka kalau dia sebesar boleh masuk uh, Queen Mary ke ataupun apa? Dia kurang besar itu. Yang empat layar, empat tiang layar. Tak boleh masuk. It's just impossible. Tapi kalau pelabuhan dia dekat apa ni, Pulau Melaka tu, Ah itu mungkin boleh masuk tapi kapal-kapal Cina yang yang, yang masuk situ tapi kapal-kapal Cina juga kapal besar-besar yang empat atau lima layar yang macam ditunjukkan tadi itu cuma ketika kapal Cheng Ho rombongan kapal Cheng Ho rombongan kapal-kapal dagang tak sampai besar itu jadi minta maaf lah <laughs> bukan emosional saya nak pasal prof kata kena kuat jadi sebab Ah, ya, ya. Saya, saya tahu uh, Dr. Rani akan memberi perspektif yang yeah. yang uh, saya, berdasarkan saya, saya memang kepada sejarah. Yes. yes. Sebab bila orang usik sejarah, saya saya sudah <laughs> apa sikit. Tak mahu. <laughs> no. Tapi itu itulah. Sebab gambaran yang ada yang ditunjukkan dalam hikayat itu dia selalunya bercorak apa anakronisme iaitu ceritanya tidak selari dengan masanya masanya tidak selari dengan ceritanya orang oh. yang dah mati masih hidup orang yang cerita yang de, uh, orang lain yang lakukan hang tuah yang jadi hero sedangkan yang melakukan perkara itu orang lain umpama yang pergi ke China bukan hang tuah yang makan jag, apa ni uh, apa tu makan kangkung tu bukannya hang tuah betul Ha, jadi ini, ini 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 yang saya apa ni tapi yang puan kata tentang perlunya apa ni uh, uh, apa ni hero uh, dalam fable dalam cerita-cerita dan hikayat itu memang uh, saya terima lah itu eh? sebab ada orang, orang barat pun ada <laughs> macam kata prof dulu macam Robin Hood macam apa ni Adi Sanjong tah betul ke tidak pun benda tu nah ataupun king arthur dengan apa dia dia punya kota dia apa tu saya pun lupa nama kota tu jadi dia, kita terima tapi apakah benda itu sama dengan kita hari ini dan lagi satu minta maaf perfect yeah. ada satu perkara yang kita kita apa ni si apa ni si andrick the black was never a sail apa ni uh, apa ni orang kata pelaut Mungkin dia laut dia nak naik paru naik, naik apa naik sampan je sebab dia adalah dikatakan dibeli di pasar di pasar slave di Melaka selepas tertawannya sekitar apa ni Melaka sekitar 1512 bila pula dia pelaut yang handal he can never sail a galleon kalau perahu-perahu kecil boleh lah. Selat Melaka tu boleh lah. Ambil buah kelapa dua biji pun boleh kita berenang. Sebab Melaka ke, ke Melaka ke apa tu cuma lebih kurang 21 kilo je. Tapi dulu dah perahu yang tak pernah dia naik macam mana dia boleh. Mekanisme yang tak pernah ada dalam apa ni dunia Melayu. Atau berdiri dia sendiri. Sebab dia dikatakan Sumatran, Sumatran slave. Berasal dari Sumatera. Walaupun ada yang mengata Sumatera itu pada masa itu adalah wilayah Melaka maka dia orang Melaka lah. Jadi ini yang ini kita kita semuanya saya ingat minta maaf lah ini. But this is not a discussion about this. Ah, uh, <laughs> tak boleh. Tak, nah, dari sudah dari sudut sejarah saya <laughs> tak tak itu lah. Kalau bo, kalau boleh lah kita itu kan. Uh, bila yang menulis tu kalau nak menulis tentang uh, mahalaya uh, apa ni mana mahala malahayati ya uh, yang dengan inong bale dia inong bale tu yes. kru dia tu bale balu yes. itu semua kat janda yes. ha, semua tu kat janda yang jadi kru dia yes. dengan dia sendiri ha, jadi itu pakai inong bale dia perempuan-perempuan uh, balu jadi yang ini pun satu cerita juga Walaupun dia wujud, tak semananya wujud. 
Tapi itu juga satu cerita yang lebih kurang sama dengan Panglima Awang. Nama orang itu pun kita tak tahu. Pengabihnya yang kita tahu, Henry Rulek. Nama yang dibagi oleh uh, orang Spanyol. Ya, atau Hendrik. <laughs> itu saja saya. Uh, Pak Dinot, tak, tak dengar. Can, can... Oh okay. Ah yeah, okay. Oh, akan akan tak dengar, tak dengar. Can you hear me now? Okay, dengar, okay, okay. Okay. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as I was saying, I can accept all that, but again, this is a discussion of uh, 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 storytelling and how it inspires people. I want to bring an example from, can you hear? Uh, closer to the screen. Oh, maybe, wow. Maybe, uh, yeah, 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 okay, okay. Tadi, 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 closer to the screen. Now, can you hear me? Uh, can, can, can. But you have to face the screen, baru. Okay. Okay, uh, okay, okay, can, right. can, okay. Okay, okay all right. Okay, as I was saying, um, uh, this is a, a session talking about hikayat and also how it can inspire people and the future generations. I want to talk a little bit about the movie Braveheart, about William the Brave and Bruno. They never met in real life, but in the movie, they were put in the same time frame. This is how... Uh, uh, um, if we, if we fail to take uh, inspiration from our past, and if we continue to, uh, you know, even the simple idea, the Chinese, yeah? even the simple idea of naming their lunars, their, their spaceships, um, uh, for example, uh, Huawei, Huawei taking, taking their name from the word flower, in Chinese, if we do not take inspiration from all the literature that we have, we have nothing. Because, because inspiration is not something it uh, generated from, from fact. It is an emotion. An emotion needs to be inspired by stories, I mean, I, I mean that is that is why I always have uh, maintained I am not a historian. I am a storyteller. I'm very well aware of the fact that in Sejarah Melayu, Hang Tuah is one of many. But in Hikayat Hang Tuah, suddenly he takes on things that Hang uh, uh, Hang Jebat takes on things that Hang Kasturi did. Hang Tuah takes on things that Hang Nadim did, etc. Because Hikayat Hang Tua is a literature, is, is a Hikayat truly. But Sejarah Melayu was more uh, recording uh, uh, um, events that happened, in a sense. Even then, after it had happened. So, so, so for me, uh, I, again, I say, we read between the lines. And Hikayat, you know, history stays stagnant in the past, it cannot change because it is always history, it's based on fact. But Hikayat is different. Hikayat is allowed to evolve. Hikayat is allowed to inspire and that is why uh, uh, I love the Hikayat. Because I know the children, um, they uh, uh, having, ha having, having kids of my own, I see the way that they are inspired by grandeur and heroics. And that's what I bring to Hikayat. But Hikayat is not, it's not to me fact. No, it's not. It's just a means to inspire our people. And, and what is, uh, uh, what is, what is uh, the Iliad or the Odyssey? If not Hikayat. Do we have any structures? We only have Omar who wrote the uh, Iliad and the Odyssey hundreds of years after all the things that were supposed to happen, happened. But they were inspiring. And they inspired the Greeks, who in turn inspired the Rome, who in turn inspired America. 
that is the gift of legends and folklore. And that is why I call it a memory, because a memory never stays the same. The way you see the past, it always changes in your mind. So that is why I, I maintain that hikayat and folklore are the memories, how you perceive them, what 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 impacts you, uh, 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 your thoughts, the memories of the ancient civilization, not, not the history itself, but what you take away from it. Boleh dengar ke Prof? Tak tahu boleh dengar ke? Boleh, boleh, boleh. Boleh, boleh, boleh. Boleh, boleh, boleh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's the way I... Because, because my end game is really to inspire um, uh, the younger generation to appreciate their culture, their culture and their heritage. And, and this is the way I do it. But I have to study a little bit of history as I say, Hikaya is evolving so that I get a sense of place and I get a sense of time. And I respect that. I respect the history. But for storytelling, I mean, um, bring up the bodies. A Booker Prize book tells the story of uh, uh, um, Anne Boleyn. Is it history? No, it's not. It's not. But it's a Booker Prize award-winning book because it infuses history it makes it makes it makes a historical fiction that is so believable stories of Wu Zetian and all this who knows I mean her history was obliterate ob ob obliterated by the uh, uh, by the Tang Dynasty because she was like you know in the midst of it all but she inspired people and, and that's what I hope Hikayat will do. But never, never to replace history. Never to replace history. Because history, uh, history is fact. It cannot be changed. Unless you have new findings. Yeah. Uh, from, you know, uh, uh, you, your, your response uh, uh, brings a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, Implications on history, not on storytelling. <laughs> <laughs> because, I, I don't uh, want to catch all history. Uh, yeah, there, there are many ways to look at history. I know that Dr. Kirani is a historian, uh, trained historian, and, and, and perhaps most, uh, most historians would look uh, in a similar way. Some historians may not be, be empirical historians. Uh, some may dabble into or use history or play with history like myself. But uh, I, want, I want to note that uh, this series of lectures is, uh, uh, does not only look at Malay maritime civilization uh, from a historical perspective. Uh, it does not only provide uh, speakers that uh, can relate to uh, historical, uh, I like that I don't say this, uh, historical facts, quote unquote, because to me facts are also Invented. There's a period in history, uh, in, in, in human history, when facts were invented. That was in the 16th century. Before that, facts was not a category, but in the 16th century, facts was an invention. Mm -hmm. So again, that category uh, is is probably so. We, we find history as as quite contested, uh, uh, contested in terms of uh, in terms of how we view it. But this series of lectures uh, from the first uh, until the last, who comprise uh, various perspectives. Okay? Uh, we have uh, we have had uh, you know, one or two lectures on, on based on folklore, uh, on on on, on the, uh, not specifically on the hikayat, uh, but based on folklore, based on the uh, genealogical evidence, okay? uh, on on uh, on on Malay maritime experience, and yours is hikayat and. Uh, in, I think a uh, lecture next month or month after will be on technology. And uh, in, uh, uh, towards the end of the year, uh, based on the uh, policy uh, and, and, uh, uh, and politics with regard to uh, the nation state. So there are many approaches uh, in terms of understanding and in terms of looking into uh, 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 
the narrative on the uh, Belize maritime civilization. Again, uh, uh, one, one, two of my sources uh, will be Ibn Khaldun uh, and Fernand Burdell. Uh, I'm looking into uh, civilizational studies uh, in terms of how uh, we measure Belize civilization and we create a consciousness about Belize civilization. So these are the approaches that we take uh, in, in, in this, uh, in this uh, lecture series. Uh, we may not resolve, uh, we, we, we may not find an answer, but I hope that the uh, memories of the past, uh, collective memory, collective experience, uh, 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 proverbs, uh, even archaeology, which people think uh, you know, uh, would be the final testimony of, of fact, uh, yeah. can also be can also be questioned because uh, it's how we interpret archaeology. You know, in other words, how we interpret the past, and there's no one interpretation. Yeah, I, I saw Professor Aziz. You're 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 muted. Can, can you unmute? Yeah, uh, very great, Prof. Prof, go ahead. I I enjoy listening to our speaker today and to your comments. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Prof. Aziz is our dean. Uh, we thank him for the support uh, that we are, we are doing. But nevertheless, at the end of the day, uh, uh, we hope to achieve a few things. Uh, one of which is uh, a contribution to, to the story of, of, of uh, uh, Malay Maritime, uh, which also includes, uh, I hope in some lectures, uh, uh, the formation of, uh, of, of identity. Uh, of religion. The coming of Islam is a maritime affair. Uh, Islam came uh, not to land, but to, to the waters, uh, uh, to the oceans, both from the east and from the west. Uh, uh, of course, many people talk about Islam coming from the west, from the Indian Ocean, but they also Islam, they also uh, say that Islam came from China and through uh, the South China Sea, uh, to the eastern part of the peninsula. Also, uh, I'm thinking of uh, uh, papers or, 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 or work that, that talks about the formation of communities uh, uh, along, along uh, the littoral portions of the uh, Malay Archipelago. The formation of these littoral communities, uh, uh, the existence of trade, uh, uh, cultural exchanges are part of the maritime experience. And this way I'm trying to capture uh, uh, and, and I'm not satisfied with the list of speakers that I have. It may continue beyond uh, 2022. I hope the Dean will be generous enough to allow and to give the support. Uh, but I want to capture that uh, because uh, uh, in, 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 in the previous, uh, this morning's uh, uh, session on the project Malayu Tanjung, uh, the Spice Trade uh, and the formation of histories and expressions, uh, Malay Maritime uh, Civilization is, is is, is uh, infused with the spice tree. Uh, the spice tree is, is, is uh, a, a critical element uh, in creating civilizations and in creating communities. Uh, and, and, and one one thing which is, is quite visible uh, is the architecture in Kerala. I was thinking about the mosque in Kerala, and, and the mosque is is much due to the monsoons, the musim, uh, the, the the Arabs uh, coming to uh, uh, to the west coast of India uh, and, and built a wooden mosque without the dome. In other words, the, the mosque is uh, based uh, the, 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 the 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 confluence. And the collusion between the maritime and the local environment. Uh, I, I'm trying to look, to look at that in, in Malaysia uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, building architecture and mosque architecture as well. So th these are some of the things uh, that, that uh, uh, we, we may find uh, at the end of it. Uh, but it will stop at that. As I've said, uh, I think uh, this being the first lecture of this year, uh, I mentioned about the uh, advocacy for a maritime museum uh, in Malaysia. 
uh, to replace the floor di lama in, uh, or to reinterpret the floor di lama which is in Malacca uh, to uh, uh, recreate uh, ocean going ships and 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 finally perhaps uh, we can build an ocean going ship as described in uh, uh, I, I i don't know whether dr jani uh, would agree if, if they are because this is also a project which attempts to question and challenge uh, question and challenge the narrative uh, from the hikayat and from what i've heard for example uh, kapal bandar berahi and the various kapal kapal the various ships that have been described uh, i question myself where are they where is their technology so ultimately i would want uh, you know uh, would imagine that uh, a ship which has uh, which existed uh, which was described in, in in the literature or in, in memory uh, be built as a, as a sea going ship and 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 can sail across the malay archipelago and across uh, uh, the malay world but then there also i have the argument that uh, when you talk about malay maritime civilization when you talk about malay vessels uh, we don't need large vessels we only need small vessels because it's essentially uh, the sailing between the straits and the river uh, this came from one historian uh, he he was with this tech uh, early on he uh, went back to australia he he argued that uh, the malays don't need uh, uh, ocean going vessels uh, like uh, like the, the ones uh, that chengdu brought but uh, again in chinese records uh, uh, it is described that the malay Jongs or uh, the Malay Jong, uh, from which the word Jongs came from, are huge. So these are some of the uh, contradictory uh, narratives uh, that we have with us. Uh, hopefully that uh, you know, uh, we can resolve and overcome these things. But ultimately, uh, like what the Indonesians did of the uh, Samudra Raksa that we saw in the Borobudur, they built. Uh, uh, the Samudra Raksa, I think, about ten years back, and uh, they sailed to. I think it's a, a one way, a, a one way trip. Uh, uh, it, it was seaworthy, and uh, uh, I just knew about that uh, uh, last year. But before that, I was thinking of uh, uh, another a ship uh, that can sail not only within the archipelago but throughout the Malay world. Uh, in other words, across the oceans, uh, the, the uh, Indian and the Pacific. And when you said about the uh, the woman and the ladies uh, in the kind uh, of uh, 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 awang awang sulung merah muda awang sulung merah awang sulung muda uh, we recall the directive of uh, about 15 or so women from Borneo uh, from the Mayan tribe uh, in Banjarmasin who sail uh, to Madagascar yes <laughs> across the Indian Ocean yes uh, and they were ladies they were women. I don't know whether the men were there, but uh, these were the 15 or so women who, about 1,500 years ago, uh, oh. sailed from Borneo, and uh, they just discovered that it's uh, uh, in the area of Banjarmasin, in, in, in southeast uh, Borneo, and they yes. sailed to uh, Madagascar. They, they, they formed the, the, the uh, earlier population in Malagasy. Uh, and, and, and from where you know, uh, uh, they brought in the uh, Austronesian language and the Malagasy people identify themselves with the Austronesian world. So again, this, these are important uh, stories. Again, uh, we, we may look at this uh, Malay maritime uh, phenomenon uh, against the context of uh, the Austronesian uh, complex, the Austronesian network with regard to how uh, uh, sailing uh, through various vessels uh, were conducted uh, among among the Australasian that formed the network of islands uh, in the Pacific, uh, Hawaii to Maori and so on, and and uh, they have their own knowledge. Uh, you know, they have. Uh, uh, they will say that when the Vikings crossed uh, uh, the, the Atlantic, the, the Vikings were just crossing a pond, but they sailed from what we call Southeast Asia. Uh, to the Pacific and they ended up in, in New Zealand and Turapanui. When I uh, responded then I said they drifted, they said no, they did not drift. There was a, that, that's a theory called the drift theory that, that, that the Polynesians drifted from Southeast Asia oh. to the Pacific. They said no, they did not drift. They had a destination. But it was, it, it seemed to be uh, 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 without any purpose, without any direction. 
but they say that they 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 knew where they were going because they were looking at the stars, and they had exactly. at least knowledge of navigation. So I I, I wanted to link this uh, this uh, tacit knowledge uh, of of what we call the Polynesians because the Polynesians are well known. Why they are well known? Because they are popularized by Western culture. <laughs> uh, the the uh, barbaric uh, warlike Maoris. Yes. When, when people tell me, I say, no, the Maoris are not warlike. But they were warlike because they were represented by Western colonialism. That was that is colonial knowledge that represents them as warlike. Actually, they are not. So again, here uh, in the process, uh, uh, aspects like uh, 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 decolonization to decolonize the image and uh, something which I came across recently, de uh, uh knowledge. Again, uh, uh, one, 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 one statement which I have to make is that perhaps, uh, historians do not like it, that history has imperialized uh, collective memory uh, in many ways, that it may have distorted uh, our being. Uh, because my case with, uh, well, my, my, my involvement with the history of Penang uh, is, is, uh, would have differences with how historians would see. They have already uh, 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 written against uh, what, I've, what I've written. Anyway, uh, uh, I think we, uh, uh, th these are, th th that's, this is the thinking behind this project. Uh, and uh, we hope that uh, we can come up with something, uh, some documents. And uh, of course, the, 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 the discourse continues. Uh, and perhaps it would be refined. Uh, and uh, what's important here is that we explore some things which has which is not popular. Okay? Uh, one of which is uh, which uh, will be a, a part of two two papers which are which are preparing now. Uh, one for the Tukano conference. The other is for this lecture uh, at the end of the year. Uh, would be to use uh, the framework of Ibn Khaldun, the Khaldunian uh, framework with regard to how. Uh, one uh, collectively uh, understands uh, Arabic culture, okay? as opposed to one how one understands uh, uh, Malay maritime culture. So that approach uh, can be used uh, uh, consistently, or can be uh, taken with the opposite. In, a, in other words, uh, I've, I've said this many times. Uh, Khaldun says that. Uh, the reservoir of Arabic culture is the desert. Okay? Yeah. Because he was talking about North Africa. He was talking about, he's not even concerned about the Mediterranean. Strangely, uh, at least. <laughs> your countrymen. <laughs> but, uh, but here in, 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 in the, in the Malay archipelago and the various uh, people who study, yeah, we have to be concerned about the oceans. We have to be concerned about the seas and the rivers and the waters. That's why we call it Tanah Ayam. Whereas Kaldu is concerned about the desert. So we have neglected that tanah air, that, that tanah air as the embodiment and as a factor in our lives that configures our lives. And uh, uh, Farish Noor has uh, last year, the last lecture last year, made a very pertinent point how tanah has been separated from air when the, when the Europeans brought their war uh, to Southeast Asia and broke up. When they broke up, uh, the tanah and air in the archipelago they broke up. They broke up history and collective memory. Uh, one of the things which they broke up is the, the idea of Maranta. Uh, because Maranta is uh, a maritime, uh, both the Tana is uh, both uh, a Tana and iron factor. You see, so when they broke up uh, and divided uh, 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 lands and water in the Malay Archipelago, they also broke up our past. And what happened is that as a result, the idea of Marantau, uh, which has no translation in English, has been sidelined and erased. And this is another one which we hope that uh, we can uh, bring up on the, uh, the auspices of uh, the discourses at the ISTEC. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and that is linked to uh, the uh, phenomenon of uh, uh, Tanah Ayan, uh, the maritime world of the Malays. So I'm making this distinction. Uh, uh, also, this distinction between the, the European civilization, although late uh, talking about late modern European civilization has become a maritime civilization, but that maritime civilization is dominant, aggressive, and imperialistic. 
So again, one has to see that Malay maritime civilization is not dominant, is not imperialistic. We don't attempt to colonize, uh, uh, which I've written in another article, which is published soon. Yes. Uh, others have colonized us. My question is, why, uh, why have we been colonized by the West, but we ourselves, in terms of uh, our, our facility of water, have not colonized anybody? And why also has China and India? Huh? Uh, India may not be known to me as a maritime power, but China, yes. Uh, but uh, again, that maritime civilization or that maritime uh, uh, policy uh, have not ended up in colonizing. Southeast Asia or Malacca or uh, the Malay Archipelago. This, this, these, are, these are questions which, which we have to ask. Uh, why only uh, colonization uh, uh, comes from Europe? Of course, when we trace back, it comes from the Romans. And uh, uh, most Anglo-Saxons would, would inherit their tradition from the Romans. Anyway, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to see how the Romans fare in the discourse by Ibn Khaldun. Uh, so, uh, 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 with that, I think there are no more. Uh, uh, let me see if I have any questions or comments from uh, if they, uh, Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, there's one comment. We want more lecture from Sister Dinon Aziz. Very enlightening, a new narrative with in-depth uh, insights. Uh, so we hope we can we can uh, invite you again. I think uh, yeah, uh, IIUM has invited you uh, a couple of times uh, and and to enlighten us. So thank you very much, Pan Zalina Abdul Aziz, alias Dino Aziz, for uh, an enlightening uh, uh, and uh, uh, a revelation. Uh, with regard to the intricacies of the Hikayat. Uh, and uh, you know this this uh, uh, this is uh, a, a, in a sense uh, a source of history although uh, we may not take it as precisely as what the historian would say but a source of history based on on collective memory uh, based on the, uh, based on the uh, uh, experience uh, of, of the past. Uh, is, this, is this from you? Oh, okay. Uh, no, sorry. This is another one. Huh? Excellent framework for the development of Malay world civilization studies. Excellent framework uh, for the development of, of Malay world civilization studies in our present and future context, including civilizational analysis and civilizational values of the Malay world will give a new horizon. So thank you for, for the comments uh, that you've made. Uh, we hope that uh, we can learn something, but again, bear in mind, uh, 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 you know, uh, to have a Malay Hikayat Museum uh, sometime in the future. So thank you very much uh, uh, to, you, to our, our esteemed speaker. Um, and uh, we hope to look forward to more of her work and her writings, uh, I mean, her books and uh, her writing, the papers. With that, that's when I was first exposed to, I think, about 20 years back uh, in, in the New Straits Times. Uh, and uh, thank you very much to those who, uh, who are attending, uh, Prof. Uh, Aziz, uh, Dr. Jelani, and I see Fisol, uh, my colleague Fisol, our speaker, uh, next speaker, and uh, uh, my students, and uh, all the rest. Uh, and uh, we'll join and uh, we'll see you uh, 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 next month for the second uh, lecture for this year. So, salam alaikum. Thank you. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Thank you, Prof. Very great. Thank you, thank you, Sister Nino. Masha Allah.